Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have some practices yet again quickly approaching. They just got done with the rookie minicamp. They're on a little bit of a break now. And then they are going into some OTA practices from, I believe, May 25th to May 27th. That's three days of practices. Then they have a break. They have more OTAs, then another break, then a mandatory mini camp, then another break, and then finally even more OTAs to finish out that list. And these are voluntary, by the way. And I know players have been talking about whether they should or should not show up. I'm confident that a lot of Buccaneers players are going to show up to these practices. And in this video today, I wanted to talk about some of the players that we all should be keeping an eye on in these upcoming practices. By the way, OTAs stand for Organized Team Activity. So uh, with that being said, let's get started. And I do want to preface this you know, video with this. I'm not going to be talking about the draft class because we have been talking about the draft class a lot. And I'm not going to be talking about friends of the channel. That includes guys, you know, like John Mulshan, Calvin Ashley, TJ Simmons, uh, Jadon Mickens, and Sam Renner, because we all know that I'm going to be rooting for those guys. Uh, these guys are, you know, in very interesting situations given their circumstances. And it's a little bit of, uh, you know, picks that people aren't really talking about too much. And I just wanted to give my thoughts on these few guys here. So, Let's get started with the first player that I have on my list, which is Ross Cockrell, cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I know what people are going to be saying is, James, why would you want to keep an eye on Ross Cockrell? He is very clearly the fourth cornerback in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers depth chart right now. And I 100% agree. Ross Cockrell is the fourth cornerback. That role is probably not going to change unless something crazy happens with one of those guys who are competing for that fifth cornerback spot but the reason I have Ross Cockrell here is because I want to see the difference right I want to see the difference in terms of the starting three cornerbacks for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that being Carlton Davis Sean Murphy Bunting and Jamel Dean and Ross Cockrell you know because making sure that there is a distinction in that difference or you know there is a a, I guess a viewpoint in that difference is important because if one of those guys isn't playing, he has to get rotated out or, you know, he gets hurt for some reason, knock on wood for that. It's going to be good to have an idea of what to expect from Ross Cockrell. And, you know, while people have said, you know, since he has signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like, hey, he's a solid veteran. He can come in and start you a couple of games if he needs to. He actually did that for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he did a pretty decent job. I just want to see more continuity. I want to see more from Ross Cockrell and really have him cement that role of, hey, I'm the fourth cornerback, and, you know, I can come in and start a couple of games and do a pretty decent job if you need me to. And, you know, that's going to be very important to see how Ross Cockrell does going into these upcoming practices just to see how solid the Buccaneers' depth really is at that cornerback position. So, Ross Cockrell is the first guy I have here. The second guy I have here is... Anthony Nelson. And again, much like in the case of Ross Cockrell, Anthony Nelson is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' fourth edge rusher. Right now as it stands, you have Shaq Barrett, you have Jason Pierre-Paul, now you have Joe Tryon, who's going to be that third guy, and then you have Anthony Nelson. And I would argue that there is a lot of pressure on Anthony Nelson to perform, grow, if you will, because they got Joe Tryon. You know, Anthony Nelson is no longer the third pass rusher for this team. So he's got to make an impact and he's got to, you know, continue to provide pressure and grow and improve while he still has these opportunities because there's also a couple of young guys like Quentin Bell, uh, like Cam Gill, who are kind of breathing down his neck a little bit and potentially competing with him for snaps and opportunities. Now, uh, we can talk about that in a separate video with, you know, training camp battles and things like that. But, you know, Anthony Nelson, you know, it's 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 such an interesting story with him because when he's been there, when I've seen him practice and whatnot, he has shown good flashes. But I just feel like we haven't seen enough consistency with Anthony Nelson for him to say, yeah, like this dude's a solid guy. He's a very, you know, important, solid piece in the rotation. He's kind of just been a guy so far. And I feel like he can be way, way, way better than that. Um, if we just start to see him unlock more of his potential. So pay attention to Anthony Nelson. Let's see how he continues to grow and develop. Still incredibly, incredibly young, by the way. He's only been in the league 
for a couple of years now. So yeah, let's just watch Anthony Nelson. Let's watch and see how he grows and develops, especially now with that added pressure of, you know, he's not automatically the third pass rusher anymore. Joe Tryon's there and Joe Tryon's going to be that third guy. So Anthony Nelson, how do you respond to that? You know, how do you respond to a couple of guys breathing down your neck? How do you respond to a guy who has now taken your third edge rusher job? Let's see. That's going to be pretty darn important, in my opinion, for the overall depth, um, you know, deeper depth, if you will, of the Buccaneers' edge rushing position. But the next player I want to keep an eye on is actually Tampa Bay Buccaneers kicker Ryan Suckup. And I know what people are going to say, again, is, James, Ryan Suckup's amazing. I know Ryan Suckup's amazing. He had arguably the best year ever by a Buccaneers kicker in franchise history. You know, Connor Barth had a great year in 2011. He had very, very solid percentages, but regular season and playoffs included, in my opinion, Ryan Suckup's the top guy. And I know people would say Martin Gramatica. I don't want to care what you say. He had like an 83 percentage during that 2002 Super Bowl season, and then he missed one field goal in the playoffs, whereas Ryan Suckup did not miss a single one. So in my opinion, Ryan Suckup gets the nod there as best, you know, season in you know, for a kicker in Tampa Bay Buccaneers history. But with all that being said, I want to see again more continuity with Ryan Suckup. I want to see him go out there and just be as phenomenal as he is this year as he was last year. I want to see that continuity. I want to see him continue to be great and continue to just be an amazing kicker. The Buccaneers signed him to a pretty decently sized deal for a kicker. I believe he's making around three and a half million dollars. So yeah, you would hope that if you're giving a guy that much money, he can go out there and do the job that he needs to do for that kicker position. So I'm just going to be paying attention to continuity with Ryan Suckup, how he continues to stay consistent with his overall greatness. But finally, guys, the last player that I want to talk about is, again, another kind of out there pick, but I do feel it is very important. It is Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive tackle Steve McClendon. And this one, again, might be an out there pick. You may be thinking, why Steve McClendon? Well, you know, Steve McClendon got traded midway through the year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from the New York Jets, and it was a position of need. Vita Bay had just gone down with injury. Nacho was filling in serviceably, but they needed more depth, and Steve McClendon came in and provided the depth that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers needed, not just as a run stopper, but he even provided a little bit of a pass rush as well. At age 34, by the way, I mean, Steve McClendon's up there. He might only have a year or two left in him, but he was really solid overall. He was a rotational guy. The run game barely missed a beat, and, you know, the pass rush, while it wasn't the same, you know, without Vita Vea, it was still serviceable. You know, guys still got to the quarterback, and they still did a pretty decent job, Steve McClendon being a big part of that. And I'm just not going to forget the Super Bowl, when he was actually a very big factor of getting to Patrick Mahomes throughout a good chunk of that game. So, that was just awesome that he was able to do that, but... I'm also going to be paying attention to his leadership. You know, McClendon's been in this league for such a long time. He is such a solid veteran, a locker room presence. Uh, you have guys like him and JPP along that front seven that are just really solid leaders, really solid dudes in general. So I want to see how McClendon comes in now that he's been with the team for a few months and how he gets integrated into that locker room, you know, taking some of these young defensive linemen under his wing. Him and Sue, I mean, along that defensive line are solid leaders, point blank. And Vita Vea, he's still young enough to where he could still get some very solid mentorship. I think Nacho could do some good with some mentorship. Guys like Sam Renner, Patrick O'Connor, uh, Jeremiah Ledbetter, Khalil Davis, among others, these are a lot of young guys who could use very solid mentors. And I think that McClendon, along with Sue, at least along that defensive line, could be one of those guys who provides some very solid leadership, uh, some very solid mentorship, and overall still continue to be a very solid backup rotational guy uh, doing what he needs to do, like the professional that he is. I mean, they did re-sign him for a reason. But anyway, guys, that's kind of it for all the players that I have marked here. What do you guys think? I know some of these guys might be out there. Some of these guys, a lot of people might not you know, be thinking about right now, but I thought it was important to highlight a few players um, who I'm not really going to be talking about, you know, in upcoming videos like training camp battles and things like that. Now, if they do very good things in practice and whatnot, of course I'll talk about it. But I kind of wanted to highlight some guys that I feel like people aren't really talking about too much 
in certain circumstances. So what do you guys think? What are some players that you guys are going to be keeping an eye on going into these upcoming set of OTAs? Leave me your thoughts. You know, besides the rookies, you know, besides some of the undrafted free agent guys, or maybe, you know, we can include some undrafted free agent guys, but besides the rookie class and the obvious picks, what are some guys you're going to be paying attention to? Leave me your thoughts. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.